Hey there everyone, this is Danielle playing some more Super Mario Odyssey while permanently crouching. Last time we did the story in Steam Gardens and a bunch of minor moons including one very tricky 2D scrolling one. Uh, we're going to be doing some more minor moons today so we're going to see how we go. Uh, we already got that bunny so don't have to worry about that one. Let's go, I reckon this way, let's go this way. I don't think there's anything you have to look at with the binoculars to get a moon in this kingdom. I might be forgetting. <laughs> uh, let's have a look. Uh, if we come in here, there are some purple coins up there that we can get. Uh, the easiest way to get them is with an uproot, but we might see if we can make our way up there without one. Hmm, I think that's doable. It's just tricky. Yeah, I might just grab an uproot instead. This is looking a bit difficult. Uh, yeah, if we just go grab ourselves a grab ourselves an uproot out here. There's actually a few more moons we can not moons, a few more purple coins up here that we can get an uproot. So we'll do that too. Ow! There we go. Oops. There we go. And we'll go get those ones as well. Uh, then we want to head up this vine, and I'll probably get one of the probably get one of the tanks, I reckon. Because yeah, if you ditch that up route, if you come up here and get one of the tanks, there's a moon we can get using the tank. Uh, again, you have to hold up on the um, left analog while you're climbing, otherwise you will slide down because of holding crouch. Uh, so that's something to watch out for. Uh, take our way, take ourselves over this way. Let's bounce here again. Um, and we just want to make our way over here. Uh, did we already do that timer? I don't think we did. Let's have another look. I seem to remember we didn't manage to do this one. Yeah, we didn't do it. Alright, so let's see if we can manage it this time. Okay, there's not enough time for that. Okay, that, that's gonna be tricky. Remember, we don't have Kathy when we're going around on these, when we're um, doing a timer challenge like this, which makes things very tricky. Okay, I can we do a bonk like that, and then we backflip our way, Ooh. okay, we need to face the right way, but I think that should work. Okay, that's a lot slower. Um, obviously this is much easier with normal moves than at our disposal, but I think we should be able to do it. Backflip our way up here, then backflip again to get to here, then roll to do a long jump. Time that better though. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, okay, I need to turn around. Maybe doing a wall jump there would work? That would help me turn around faster, I think. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's possible. Um, while doing a roll or long jump, you can't wall jump because you will bonk instead, so...
Yes! Yeah! Um, we do want to get up there, but there is a much easier way to do it. So we're going to do it an easier way instead of trying to do it that way. Uh, let's see. Uh, there's a sub area we can go to in this direction, so let's head that way next, I reckon. Uh, um, actually, hang on. Let's just, let's just get this tank. Uh, what you meant to do... I believe you can't do it without the tank. What you have to do is take a tank down here to the beginning area of the kingdom. Um, and yeah, this is just the normal way to do the moon. This isn't anything special that we're doing right now. You just come over here, right near the Odyssey, at the beginning of the kingdom, and you just shoot that rock over there until you've broken your way through. Because there's a moon inside. Pretty simple. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah! Okay, so that's two moons. Uh, one of them was quite tricky, the other one was pretty easy. Uh, next, we're gonna, I reckon we will warp up to the secret flower field and then have a look around. There is a moon you can get by going into the secret flower field once you've already saved it, so we're gonna go in there and do that one now since we're right here. Basically, all you have to do. See all these little, um. Little, uh. What are these called? Sap sapling? No, these little sprouts here. You just go to a couple of homing cap throws to. Not homing cap throws, these kind. Spinning cap throws to activate all of these. And you gotta be quite quick about it because, yeah, they, they go back to normal. There we go. So when you do that, the whole flower field blooms all over, and a moon pops out. Easy peasy. Uh, that was just a little tricky because of the way uh, spinning cap throws work. The fact that you have to use motion control, which I think is dumb and bad, but it's not good. It's 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 an annoying feature. There should be a button for doing the different kinds of cap throws, or a button combination or something. Uh, as it stands, there are four face buttons on, like, a standard Switch controller, and this game uses two of them, and then uses the same two actions on the other two buttons, so it, it's redundant, which is annoying. Uh, yeah, this area hasn't fully reset itself, much like some of the other areas earlier in the in the game. Uh, because we finished uh, the story on a revisit, so it hasn't properly refreshed, and, and it won't do that until we actually leave the kingdom and come back using the Odyssey. Uh, we might do that in a moment, just to... Okay, I already did that one. Uh, some purple coins down there, so we can head that way. There's also a sub area, I believe, just at the top of this cliff here. There's also one just at this level. I don't think we did either of those yet, so let's go have a look. Uh, so yeah, there's one just in here, which is pretty easy to get to. You just gotta make your way around here. Um, and then get stuck in here because you can't really see what you're doing. There we go. Ah, yes. Okay, so we've got two moons to get here. There's one up there, and there's another one at the end. So, basically, this is about using these flower paths. It's fairly easy to make your way through here. Uh, you're supposed to use the Goombas to get up there, uh, but if you don't screw it up like that, you can, in fact, do it with just a pretty good cap bounce. So, I'm going to try that again. The intended way to do it, you just make a Goomba tower and then hop off the top of the tower in order to reach the moon, but you don't have to do it like that.
because you can just do that. It's pretty easy. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah! And then from here, we want to... There's actually some purple coins in this um, sub-area, so we want to make sure we get those. Uh, this flower path does dip into the poison a couple of times, so you've got to be careful. Uh, here you meant to just do some ball jumps. There we go. And then you're going to die because you bounced off the wall itself. Okay, uh, I should have done a backflip and cap bounce instead of, um, you know, what I did. <laughs> so you can get to here pretty quickly because of all these platforms and stuff, but if you, you know, fall off an edge while you're rolling, you keep rolling and that's a problem. So watch out for that. Okay. Whereas if you, if you long jump off an edge, you can cancel out the fact that you were long jumping by throwing Cappy. But you cannot do that if you happen to be rolling and you go off the edge. You're basically stuck. So that's something to be very careful about. Um, I imagine this room will be quite interesting to speedrun because there's a lot of faster routes to do things compared to the like default path. I used the bonk there to cancel out my crouch, just so I could jump up that wall a more easily. Uh, it's a bit of a trick you can pull. Uh, here, it just goes into the poison for a little bit, so you just gotta do something like that to get through. Uh, these are just coins, I'm pretty sure, so I'm not too, whoa, not too concerned about that. Uh, remember, you can't actually roll up a slope very easily, so I'm gonna do it like that instead. There we go. And that gives us the other moon in this sub area. If I can get it. Ba -ba -da -ba. Yeah! So yeah, we got two moons from Flower Road sub-area. Uh, and there's another sub-area just near this one, which we'll be doing next. Basically, we want to go back down to the Rocket Flowers, which are just over here. And we want to Rocket Flower all the way to the top. I think a single flower is all you need. Yeah, easy. And there's just a little door here we can go into. If we can throw our hat at it properly. There we go. Which gives us a different sub area. I forget. Oh, it's this one. All right. Okay, so what you're supposed to do here is capture that tank in order to shoot a bunch of stuff. Um, there's a hidden moon up here. I believe you have to capture a tank to do that. But everything else here, you don't actually need to capture a tank. You can just have tanks shoot things by standing behind them. So I'm going to try to do that to avoid making this too simple. See, you want to get, you want to hit that P-switch, but if you stand on the other side of the P-switch like this, then when the tank respawns, which should happen in a second, it'll shoot towards us, hit the cage, and therefore let us press the P-switch. And that means there are more tanks around, in the, and we can we can ground pound them in order to get rid of them, but I'm not going to. I'm just gonna make my way over here. Uh, I forget what these enemies are called. Uh, bur burbos or something like that. Uh, let's see. Uh, this level's got another tank and a bunch of fire bros, so avoid the fire bros, avoid getting hit by the fire, hit the P-switch again, and you're all good. Uh, this one, there's just a bunch of tanks everywhere. I believe the P-switch is over here. I think... Oops. Oh no, there's no P-switch, there's just a moon. Okay, so that, yeah, that's the last area. What we've got to do is just stand back here, let them shoot towards the moon, and then grab it. Ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah! Uh, we did get the other one, right? Pretty sure we did. Uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Let me just have a look. Yeah, elevator blind spot. We did get it. Just wanted to make sure. So yeah, you can see that area can be done without actually capturing a tank. I did capture one for a second, but that was just a mistake, and you can see, if you didn't capture any tanks, you could still do it, because all you gotta do is lure them into shooting stuff. Uh, I think we already got this one, but I'll just, I'll just make sure. Uh, yeah, it's just a nut here. 
I think I actually already checked to see if I got it, and I had. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, we actually want to be up here for another reason, because if we make our way over there, we can get down to this sledge. Uh, this is just above the timer challenge from earlier, where I said we wanted to get up here. The reason we want to get up here is that there's this painting here uh, that we're going to be heading into in order to do one of the secret path things. So yeah, you can get up here by doing the timer challenge really well, but you can also just get up here by coming up from the other way. <coughs> oh, I got the pops. So yeah, this painting leads to the Luncheon Kingdom. Uh, I believe if we went to uh, Steam Gardens and then Lake Lamode, then this painting would be in Lake Lamode instead. Uh, but it just gives you a little sneak preview of one of the game's later kingdoms. Uh, there is a speed run that involves getting to this island and then making your way down there and damage boosting in order to reach solid ground. It cannot be done in the 1.2 version, they actually patched that out. But in 1.0, it is possible to make your way all the way down there and get to Mount Volbono as soon as you've reached the Fourth Kingdom. Fourth Kingdom? Let me think. Technically fifth, because of Cap Kingdom. Hang on. As soon as you've reached... Uh, hang on, hang on. Cap. One, two, three... Yeah, fifth. Okay. Yeah, as soon as you've reached wherever the Fifth Kingdom is, it's possible to go to the painting in order to get to here and skip ahead to much later in the game if you're on the 1.0 version. Uh, the story moves don't actually spawn, and the painting, I believe, will not work to go back. So once you've done that... Oh no, the painting should let you go back. Hmm. No, the painting will let you go back, that's right. Not that, that... yeah. I was thinking of something else. Um, but yeah, there, there is a speed run which involves trying to do that tactic, uh, which is something that is interesting to do because uh, it involves a bunch of damage boosting. I think you have to use two-player mode, maybe, to get Cappy to um, reach one of the Potaboos lava bubbles. The, you know, the, the lava bubbles. Yeah, the lava bubbles. They're called Potaboos or Potaboos in some games, but... They're called Lava Bubbles in this one. Uh, there will be a moon just here. Uh, there's one where you collect notes using that um, uproot there. But the moon's not actually here yet, so we won't be getting it just yet, because it's not available. Uh, can we actually climb up here? Uh, maybe. Uh, we can go over here, though, so we can just do that instead. I believe this rock is used to clip into the ground in some speedruns, which lets you skip to much later in this, in this kingdom, once you've gotten out of bounds. I think we already got this moon earlier. Yeah, we did. Uh, it's a lot of moons in this kingdom. It's hard to keep track of which ones we've got and which we haven't. Uh, what's this? Oh yeah, that's this room. Uh, I think we already did this as well. Um, just want to make sure, uh, uh, I forget what it's called, so I'm not really sure which one it is. Uh, let's just get it again, just in case. Get the uproots hat off and capture it. Yeah, the easiest way to reach that moon is to use an uproot, uh, because you can just make your way over here, and... The moon is on top of that ledge, just above this piece. So what you've basically got to do... Oh, actually the uproot doesn't help that much. Hmm, alright, let's ditch the uproot. Um, goodbye uproot. Yeah, you still like that. Uh, let's see, did we already get this one? No, we didn't. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah! Uh, on my first playthrough, that one took me a long time to find, because I didn't try basically looking up when you come through here. Uh, there's another moon we can get over this way. So we're going to head over and have a look. Uh, and also bonk against that wall. Uh, there's a, this slingshot here, a bunch of slingshots show up once you've done the Kingdom Basic, which it just gets you up there. Um, the Kingdom story, I mean. Once you've done the story, all these slingshots show up, which are just basically simple shortcuts. None of them are necessary, they're just kind of handy to have. Uh, I did try to do this moon earlier, without using the uproots, 
Uh, I know it's possible while not crouching, so... We're gonna see how we go. Um, I did have some trouble with this one earlier, which is why I didn't actually end up doing it. Uh, but I have a feeling it's possible, so... Oop. Okay, so getting on that first ledge is easy. There's a lot of room to move around down here because it's just the ground, but when you're on this ledge, getting up the second ledge is much harder because you have so little room to perform the techniques you need to. I think doing a ground pound jump rather than a backflip might be the key. Uh, to do that, we can, we can do that. We just have to uh, do a backflip, then ground pound from, from the backflip to get back to, to do our ground pound because you need to be in the air. Uh... Yeah, I think that might work. Okay, let's see. Okay, we bonked against that wall, but I think that was the basic strat we need. Something like that. Um, basically, you just have to climb onto these two platforms, and then I think there's a nut at the top that contains the moon. I don't quite remember. Uh, also, you don't want to do that which is where you throw that Cappy directly underneath the platform and then bounce off her and hit your head on the platform. Because then, yeah, that won't work. Uh, I'm pretty sure we can get enough height. It's just whether we can... Actually, yep. Yes! Okay. Okay, there's actually one more. Um, I forgot about that part. Okay, and then you just have to get that nut. So, yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, this is basically the same challenges again, except this platform's a bit wider, so it might be a bit easier to get onto. There we go. Okay, that one was much, much easier. Uh, we just got to break that by hitting it a couple of times. We'll just do what I just did again. Uh, maybe twice or whatever. There we go. And then we can just do the same thing again, basically, to get up there and actually get the moon. Ba -ba -da -ba. Yeah! So yeah, the intended way to do that, which is much, much easier, is just to use an uproot to climb up these three platforms. And it takes, like, five seconds. It's, it's really, really easy to do it the normal way. Uh, I am going to use an upgrade to get those purple coins, uh, just because that's going to be annoying otherwise to climb back up and jump down and get one at a time, and etc. Et uh, I, don't, I don't know if there's already a moon here or if it comes up later, so let's just jump up here and have a quick look. Uh, looks like there's nothing here yet, so no moons to be had. There's a couple of purple coins here, which is always nice. There we go. Uh, if we go down the off this edge here, that's not actually a death pit. That leads to the deep woods. And there's a bunch of moons in there we'll need to get, but I don't want to do that right now. The deep woods are annoying. Uh, basically, it's like a sub area that you can't warp out of, but it's quite large, and because it's a sub area, it doesn't have a map, and it's just it's really hard to navigate and annoying. Uh, did we already get the rolling rock here? I think we did, but I don't quite remember. It's possible that it hasn't actually spawned yet as well. Let me see. I can't see a rolling rock here, so it's possible we haven't done it yet. Uh, also possible that it hasn't even spawned yet, and that's why we haven't done it. Uh, I forget whether it's it's um whether it's in the whether it's a um, post game move or not. Uh, anyway, we've got 10 moons. If this is a 24 minute video, that's probably a pretty good length. So I might actually cash in these moons and stop here. Or may maybe I'll go to the Hintart moon and come back. Just so the area reloads and we get access to some more stuff that we're supposed to have access to. The Hintart moon is pretty easy. I'll just go over and look at the art again and my rubber band came off. I'll just stand completely still while I fix it. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. There. Permanently crouching. 
Alright, um, so yeah, the Hintar is over here. We looked at it earlier, but we can give it another quick squiz. Oh, also, there's some purple coins just here. Uh, basically, this little hole here, you can just walk through here, but it's more fun to roll. So. Uh, what's this? Just some coins. Uh, rock. So, yeah, um, the hint art, which is just over here, you can tell it's very obviously in Tostarena, so I think we might go get that moon and then come back here for the next video. Uh, so, yeah, we're gonna go to Tostarena. Um, let's have a, I'll just have a close look at the hint art so you can see exactly what it is we're supposed to be doing. Uh, basically, if you just look closely, you can see you've got a Koopa there who's wearing a sombrero and is red. That's the uh, Koopa for the trace walking. So you have to go to the trace walking Koopa and then you have to keep walking so you find that pair of bushes or shrubs or whatever they are. And you have to walk north because you can see the little compass there. Uh, basically, it's nowhere near the trace walking. Uh, but it is directly north of the trace walking. <laughs> so we're going to head over there and do that. Uh, it's not very hard. It's just kind of annoying to have to go back and do it there. Uh, but doing that should reload this kingdom and unlock some more stuff for us when we get back. Also, there's some products in the shop. I might check what that is when we get to Tost Arena. So yeah, you just have to sail your way back there. There are a few more hint art moons that are also in Tost Arena, and maybe it would be faster to do them all in one go, but, you know, it's fine. We have to reload these areas anyway, and so if we want to do each area as we come to it, we have to do something like this in order to make sure everything actually spawns the way we want it to. Opening the moon rock would also work, but I want to keep that in a separate video so that you have your A-side and your B-side videos, rather than <sighs> having all the content in one. Uh, this kingdom... How are we doing, actually? Uh, there's three more moons here. Which ones were they? Uh, Sand Kingdom Art, the tourist one, and something else. Oh, Dancing with New Friends, right, the one we can't actually do. The impossible one. Okay, so I'm gonna just going to go to where the trace walking guy is and go from there, just so you can see exactly what the strat involves, basically. I know exactly where the spot is, and it would be faster to not go to the trace walking guy, but we're going to do it anyway. So here he is, or they are, the trace walking Koopa. We've already done the trace walking, and so we won't be doing it again, but yeah, you just stand here. You want to walk directly north, which is this way. And you just want to keep going this way until you reach a pair of bushes. Uh, and you'll go through most of the kingdom this way because there's not a lot to be seen on this direct line. Uh, watch out for this big hole in the desert. Uh, accidentally fall into that big hole in the desert. I think there's a pipe I can use to get back out, so that's okay. It's just... I don't need to go down here, so it's a little bit frustrating. <laughs> there we go, okay. Uh, that'll pop us back out. Okay, so don't fall into the hole. Uh, s holes are kind of, a, like, big slopes like that are kind of OP, because once you're sliding down one, there's basically nothing in this game you can do to stop. Uh, most slopes in the game are fine, you only have problems if you're trying to roll on them. But that particular kind of slope is, is very scary. Okay, as you can see, we are directly north of the trace walking. That's us. And there are these two bushes here. So this is the spot we're looking for. We just have to ground pound here. And the moon will come out. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah! And now I'm just going to head back to the Odyssey. Um, I might drop by the shop on the way. I could walk back there, but, you know, it's fun to never get around in this game. Since you've got the rolling, and you've got... Oh, you've got Cappy, and you've got all the fun movement that this game has to involve, has involved in it. 
I'm not really sure why there's a Tostarina Town warp, given how close it is to the Odyssey. It's incredibly easy just to warp to the Odyssey and then just roll down that short distance. I guess if you're doing like a no rolling run, maybe, but I don't know why you would do that. That doesn't sound fun. Uh, anyway, here we are. Back at... I'm actually missing some purple coins here. Quite a few. We'll have to have another look for that later, but not right now. Uh, I just wanted to drop into the store here and just see what products we have. Because there is a certain outfit that I'm hoping to get. Uh, and it hasn't become available just yet. So I don't think it has yet. Uh, yeah, not yet. We do need that doctor outfit. We'll be buying it when we need it, though. We're not too worried about it just yet. We also need that clown suit for similar reasons. Okay, so we're done here for now. We've gotten the moon we were getting with the Hintart, so we're going to head back to the Wudu Kingdom, and that should have reloaded it into the you've already done the story version that you're supposed to get. I mean, the, the you've completed the main game narrative version that you're supposed to get. It's not really a post-game. Like, post-game is when you open the moon rock, but it's a slightly different version of the kingdom that doesn't quite load when you complete the story in the middle of the kingdom. Rather than doing it, like, in the middle of the po Like, when you complete the story in the post-game, certain things don't reload the way they do when you complete the story normally, and then immediately go to other kingdom, because that's what you do with the story. Uh, I, I kind of rambled that a lot. Also, I skipped the cutscene too quick and ended up with a loading cutscene instead. <laughs> okay, so yeah, when Cappy starts telling you about the moon rock like that, that means the kingdom's been reloaded. If we look around now, there should be... Yeah, there's, there's a bunch of visitors from other kingdoms now, which means we have the right version. And that means we should have access to all the stuff this kingdom has to offer, basically. Uh, if we talk over here... We haven't bought a moon here yet. I might just do that since, you know, it takes a few seconds and you have to do it in every kingdom to get everything. <laughs> yeah! Uh, let me think. I think there's a few other moons I can do just hanging around. Let me see. Uh, as you can see, there's, there's a very, very cute cute friend here. Bonitas are just the freaking cutest. I love them all. Uh, I love every Bonita. Uh, there's some Lock Ladies hanging out in that little pond there, which is pretty cute. Uh, I'm getting tired, so I'm going to probably stop at this point. Uh, we got 12 moons from this kingdom all up. We got 10, then we cashed them in and did the Hinta, and then I bought one more, so 12. That's pretty good for this video, I reckon. Uh, we're about 30 minutes in, so that's probably a good spot to stop for now and resume next time. Uh, this is Uncle Amiibo, which is kind of hilarious. Um, basically what this does is, if you scan an Amiibo uh, after talking to this guy, then the amiibo will go and look for a moon for you, and then mark its location on the map after, I think, five minutes. Uh, and you can send out three amiibos to do that at a time. It's basically the same as the hint turret over here, which will mark a location... If you, if you ask them to help you, they will mark a location on the map where a moon is for a fee. But with the amiibo thing here, there's a time limit, and it's with amiibos instead of paying in-game in -game currency. So it's less good. Uh, both of them I don't really like that much. Um, I prefer Talkatu because it because Talkatu reminds you like what moons there are rather than telling you where to look. So you've got to think more about the names of the moons and the clues that gives you, which I enjoy. Also, Talkatu is actually free, unlike those two, which cost something in terms of resources, whether it's time or. Uh, whatever. Um, 
Anyway, I'm going to cash in this moon just so we have a clean slate to go on. So yeah, 12 moons in this video. That's a good number of moons to collect in a video. And my rubber band came off. Not that it matters too much because I'm about to stop the video anyway. But thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed these relatively easy moons we scooped up in this video. Oh, uh, there was that timer one. That was pretty hard. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the moods we did in this video and the progress we're making in this kingdom. Um, and I'll see you next time when we get some more moons. Uh, cool to get beans. <laughs> Thanks for watching.